All right, we're ready to start. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our Facebook Live Town Hall on the resources that are available to small businesses. I'm uh, thrilled to be joined by Senator Sheldon Whitehouse and Small Business Administration District Director for Rhode Island, Mark Hayward, uh, and we're going to have an opportunity to hear from both of them in ju just a moment. Uh, but just let me say at the beginning, I, obviously, this is an incredibly difficult time for our state and our country. Uh, small businesses and workers are doing their part to help flatten the curve uh, of COVID-19, but that has come at a very, very serious cost. Um, businesses are being closed, folks are being asked to stay at home, and small business owners and their employees are under a tremendous amount of stress. So many of you have been forced to um, fear not just for your health and the health of your families, but also how you can afford to keep your business open and put food on the table. And I know over the past several days since we passed uh, the big stimulus package, you've heard a lot about the $2.2 trillion in emergency relief funding that I and Senator Whitehouse and the rest of our federal delegation fought so hard to secure. Um, so I just wanna mention them briefly that in the CARES Act, which we passed last week, we secured more than $375 billion for small business relief. This includes $349 billion for forgivable loans to small businesses to pay their employees and keep them on the payroll, $17 billion for debt relief for current and new SBA borrowers, and $10 billion in immediate disaster grants. These were really important victories for our state and also for the country, but we, have, we know we have more work to do to protect workers uh, that have been displaced by this uh, public health crisis and to continue to small, support small businesses. Uh, but in that first package, uh, we included for workers and families a guaranteed direct cash payment of up to $1,200 per person and $500 for each child. And we dramatically expanded unemployment benefits that provide workers laid off as a result of the pandemic with an average of about four months of full pay. Um, this funding is really important, but the amount of information that's been circulating about how to access these benefits has been <clears throat> distant and at times really overwhelming. And that's why we're hosting today's town hall and why I'm particularly grateful that Senator Whitehouse and District Director Hayward are also joining me to help answer your questions. So uh, we've got a bunch of questions that were submitted before the town hall, which we'll get to first, and then you can send your questions in live. But now I have the pleasure of turning over uh, the podium to um, my great Senator, Senator Whitehouse, for some introductory remarks. Thank you, David. Thank you for um, organizing this call. Uh, I am quarantining at home because the Senate was exposed to each other a lot while all of this was going on. Uh, I feel fine. I did not hug Grand Paul. And I think there's every reason uh, to believe that my quarantine will be fine, but I am at home. Um, I wanna um, point out that there are five major pieces to uh, what we did. The first is the funding that will go out to Americans, the $1,200 plus the $500 per child. Um, the second is a huge fund to the state, 1.25 billion, to make sure that the state can continue to meet its obligations and make payroll and, and do all of that. The third was a big surge of funding into our uh, healthcare system, uh, which is obviously critical. Uh, the fourth was the unemployment insurance uh, boom. As you know, we've up to about 100,000 people in Rhode Island filing for unemployment insurance. And uh, it, that has been expanded uh, considerably. And the last piece is what we're talking about here today, which is support for small businesses and particularly a vastly expanded loan program that not only provides access to credit and cash for businesses that may be cash short, but also turns those loans into grants to the extent that they go to pay for payroll, rent, interest, utilities, basic operating expenses. Um, Mark Hayward is here. He was our district uh, director for the Small Business Administration for many years. He knows Rhode Island very well. He went down to help the new uh, administrator of SBA get oriented when she came on. And now he's back as our acting regional administrator and running Rhode Island as well. So we're really delighted to have uh, Mark here. Let me just say one last thing about our work in the Senate we would not have been anywhere near as successful in the Senate with all the things we were able to add to Mitch McConnell's bill and strengthen his bill, were it not for Nancy Pelosi and the House leadership of which David is a member, 
standing firm and making it clear to the House that they weren't going to get rolled with a bill that wasn't adequate. They gave Chuck Schumer enormous negotiating leverage, and we're very grateful for that, and to David and Nancy Pelosi and the team for what they enabled us to accomplish. With that, let me turn it over to Mark, a great friend of Rhode Island and a great expert of SBA matters. Mark, all yours. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here. Thank you, Senator Whitehouse, Congressman Cicilline. Uh, we've had a great relationship. Of, I've been here now 32 years. I have 40 years in the federal service. Um, I, I told Jack Reed yesterday I was retiring, and he told me it would take a, an act of Congress for me to retire by the end of the year. Um, that's very interesting. I, I, you know, I just got some information just now saying as of 7 o'clock this morning, over 1,000 loans were processed for over $500 million. So FYI to, to the two members of Congress here, the Paycheck Protection Program is exactly that. What we want people to do is you need to calculate what your actual payroll is. You provide that to your participating lender. I have sent to both Senator Whitehouse staff as well as Congressman Cicilline staff, the application, the new application. I know a lot of people went online prior to Secretary Mnuchin talking yesterday but really you should be focused on what was uh, what we sent this morning to apply uh, by virtue of that application to your participating lender. And what will happen is just very simply, this is to keep people employed. I've had a number of small businesses say, well, you know, I'll get the money and then what do I do after I get the money and I'll wait until bring people back. No, that's not the purpose of the paycheck protection program. It is for, uh, if you had uh, $1.2 million in payroll over a 12 month period, you divide that by 12, that's $100,000 a month. You multiply it by 2.5, that will give you $250,000. That's for you to bring people back on now. You take them off of unemployment, even if you've um, uh, furloughed them or you've laid them off, you bring them back onto your payroll and somebody says, well, I'm not up and operating, that's fine. So when the green light is given to the small businesses to reopen, they're already on your payroll. You're already doing that. That's the purpose of this act is to keep people on your payroll, keep those great employees that you've had over the years and to continue on. The point five is what Senator Whitehouse said. You gotta pay for your, you know, the interest on your existing loans, uh, your, your, uh, your rent, your whatever, you have payments on your facilities or your trucks or what have you. That's to keep you current um, over those two particular months. That's why the 0.5 was put in by the Congress. And that's, we recommend people do that. I can tell you, I know that since 2.30 this morning, uh, Rhode Island lenders have been putting loans into the system. I, I have not gone in because I can see when the loans go in. I haven't gone in yet to see how many are there, but I can tell you that they are active and online. Uh, the number that I gave you earlier is what Washington told me was approved and processed as of 7 a.m. this morning. Now, the, the, the interim rule, uh, the interim final rule is out. I know that there are some questions on how we do calculations, but one of the questions that I got was as it relates to um, the, I am an owner of a business, but I do not, I, I take more of, a, I take a drawer at the end of the year. I do not take a salary over that process and um, that is a that is addressed in this because it says um, first of all if you have employees and independent contractors do not include independent contractors in your calculations as they are eligible onto themselves they can apply themselves under the paycheck protection program and they can receive um, uh, money under that program but it, and it says specifically for an independent contractor or a sole proprietor wage commission income or net earnings from self-employment or similar compensation so the interim rule addresses that so people need to be conscious and that is on page 10 of the interim rule if if people have questions uh, i just briefed the cpas about 10 minutes ago um, listen, there are going to be a lot of questions. This is being rolled out. When Secretary Mnuchin talked last night, he said that this is version one. We expect multiple versions to come down the line. So with, I know that the Senate and the House tried to uh, include as much as they could, and they've done a great job. And the interim rule does give us a, a lot of leeway, but there are a lot of questions that still have to be answered. I want to pivot 
to the economic injury disaster loan. So uh, about a week ago, uh, the SBA contracted out to a private contractor, a very large contractor that I'm from a mortgage side, and they took over our platform as it relates to the economic injury disaster loan. Rhode Island one is a, was one of the very first states uh, to be declared. In fact, I think we were number four, which got a lot of people into the queue. I do know that there were 18 loans for $2.1 million that were approved. I did not go in this morning to see how many more were approved overnight. But if you, you can run down, <clears throat> excuse me, both lanes, you can run down the PPP lane, which is specifically for your payroll. And then you can run down the EIDL lane, the economic injury disaster loan lane for all other expenses. So, but you cannot do that. You cannot do payroll under the EIDL. And let me give you the example. When you go in now, it's a very easy, very short form that you fill out. And at the end of that, and I will tell you that I did this because I put a, I didn't hit the submit button, but I put a fake business in because I wanted to see where it took me. On the very last page before you hit submit, it says, do you want up to a $10,000 advance that will be in a forgivable loan from economic injury disaster? If you hit yes, that you do, and then it asks you for your bank name, for your routing number and the bank routing number, and you put that in. And I had an individual call me yesterday and say, I didn't get $10,000, I got four. And the reason why they got four, because the calculation for the advance is based off of the number of employees that you have. So if you have four employees, you're gonna get $4,000. And if you get $4,000 and you get the Paycheck Protection Program, you have to pay off that $4,000 from, from one, uh, one loan to the other but it allows you to continue to run. And we have businesses in Rhode Island that have been approved for over $300,000 in the economic injury. So what all we're saying is that the programs are there. They're running on two different tracks. You know, I'm happy to answer questions um, that you have. And, and I'm sure that there are a lot of them and I'm gonna yield back to the gentleman from Rhode Island. Thank you very much, um, Mark. So let's go right to our questions. The first question which was submitted yesterday and we have, by the way, over 700 small businesses on this Facebook Live. So it's uh, terrifically well attended, which I think shows the interest. Uh, the first question is from Rashid from Providence, who owns r, r Marketing. The question is, what initiatives are being taken to save small businesses like mine? And I think, Mark, you sort of answered that with respect to the 100% federally guaranteed loan to employers who maintain their payroll, as well as um, the small business the up to $10,000. So... That I think you answered that question. Um, the the next other thing I would say, Congressman, is people need to keep good records because on the other side, when we get to the end of that eight weeks and people are asking for forgiveness, remember, you have to prove as a small business owner that you use that money for your payroll to keep people on the payroll and to pay certain expenses. Please keep good records. Great. The next and remember question that if you're a sole proprietor, for the first time, you also have access to unemployment insurance. So if you don't have employees and you don't want to go through the loan process, your alternative is to access unemployment insurance, which you can do for the first time through this bill as a independent contractor, sole proprietor. Right. With an additional $600 federal unemployment compensation, which we added. Uh, the next question is from Sandra with Beehive Handmade in Tiverton. Would you discuss the difference between the PPP and the $10,000 EIDL grant? Come yeah, I think I just did that. The PPP basically is, is for your payroll. Um, and, and there are elements uh, in, the, in the, go up on the SBA web website, grab down the, the application because it will tell you how, you how you get to that and what you include and what you don't include. Um, but um, basically the grant is for, to try to get money into people's accounts immediately up to $10,000. The PPP is dealing with all of your payroll, which could be, and we, I had, I saw one this morning, Congressman, uh, the request was for $2.7 million. All right. So it really depends. Yep. Okay, the next question is from Deanne with ASTAT Medical <laughs> Billing Management in Pawtucket. And she says, yep. we conducted several layoffs in the early stages of this pandemic. If we were to apply for an SBA loan at this point, after having let some of our staff go, would our loan be forgiven since we were not able to maintain 100% of our employee population? 
the, both the rule and the legislation talks about February 15th. If those individuals were on the payroll on February the 15th, um, then you would, you would do the calculation based upon the prior year. But the answer is yes, okay. there is eligibility. But if, so if they laid them off after February the 15th, then, then um, they're, they're still fine. So that February 15th is the key day. For sure. It is. Uh, next question, again, is for Director Hayward from Lisa and Barrington, who owns Fulva Fusco. As a small self-employed small business owner who only hires independent contractors, what are my op options for claiming assistance? You, She could claim under the PPP uh, for self-employment. Again, that was the very provision that I just read from, uh, which is at the bottom of page 10 under what qualifies as payroll costs. Um, she cannot claim the 1099s, the independent contractors, because they are eligible in their own right. Right. So that PPP program, those loans include individuals, as Senator Whitehouse mentioned, who operate a sole proprietorship yes. or as an independent contractor and self-employed individual. So it's very yes. fully, fully covered. Great. A uh, question from Kelly in Pawtucket. Is there anything being done for companies that aren't allowing employees who are capable of working from home to do so? They're, they're, they're eligible as well. It doesn't say that the that the individuals have to be laid off. It says that this is a payroll protection program. As long as that, it's a business lo less than 500 employees. That's correct. And the affiliation rules um, were waived by the legislation itself. Great. Uh, next question is from Michael in Pawtucket who runs Michael Marco Events. And his question is, I run an event planning business. Being self-employed, do I apply for the small business forgivable loan or since it's only me, do I file for unemployment? Should I do both and hope one is approved? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I can't advise as to which one he should do. I can tell you that the PPP, um, it, I mean, if he made $100,000 last year, uh, you divide it by 12, the, you know, I mean, he, he would be get two months of salary, essentially, right. as well as expenses under the PPP program. But I, I'm not sure. So he should do a, that calculation and then compare to what his unemployment benefit is. And then he can't do both, obviously. He can only do he one. He cannot do both. It's illegal to do both. And the thing that I've said all along, remember, everybody, you're certifying under penalty of perjury all of the information you're providing to the SBA. Right. So he should do the calculation and see which <laughs> sum is greater and obviously proceed that way. Correct. The um, unemployment insurance caps out in terms of being 100% reimbursement or actually even potentially better than 100% reimbursement for your previous income at about $62,500. So if you're making more than $62,500 up to 100, then you'll probably end up doing better with uh, the SBA loan. Um, with the unemployment insurance, if you're earning considerably less than 62,000, you actually may end up getting more money because of the added $600 under unemployment insurance than you were taking home before. So you got to look at your own income to help advise that decision. Great. Next question is from Amanda in Portsmouth. When will Rhode Island's unemployed see the additional $600 a week in their unemployment payments? And I know in the CARES Act, this benefit was is active for four months beginning April 1st through July 31st. The purpose was obviously to enhance unemployment so that the, the, the aggregate would um, provide for the average worker a full salary for four months. Uh, I know uh, labor and training is busy processing record number of unemployment applications and moving as fast as they can. The one piece of advice the governor has given repeatedly is that for folks who have filed for unemployment, once you've done the application online or on the telephone, is really encouraging people not to call to check on the status because every time the employees have to go answer the phone, it means they're not processing the applications and getting the money out. So a little bit of advice from the governor on that. Uh, the next question is from Mark in Middletown who has a question about his business, Healing Arts. His question is, can you collect unemployment if you are applying for a small business loan? Uh, and I think the CARES Act provides relief for small business owners through loans, but also allows the self-employed independent contractors and part-time workers to collect unemployment. Is that right, Mark? I, I think Senator Whitehouse, um, I don't think he can do both. Um, you, if he was collecting for uh, as payroll, um, 
the answer probably would be no. But if he was going to the economic injury disaster loan and looking for assistance for um, regular business expenses, that may be acceptable, but I, I really don't know. But I think Senator Whitehouse said it, you know, if you're above a certain level, you might want to go PPP versus going unemployment. And I should also mention uh, the mayor of Providence for Providence Small Businesses announced yesterday a series of small business loan programs available to Providence small businesses. Uh, so people should be in touch with the uh, city of Providence about their economic development loans in addition to what we're discussing today from the SBA. Uh, and, and the state came out, uh, Congressman, with a uh, bridge loan. Yes. Um, you, if, uh, you know, I think it was up to $4,000, which would bridge to an S. And we, we work with them on how to structure the loan so that we could take it out when they got their SBA loan. And so folks who are interested in t contacting the Rhode Island the Depart Commerce Department about those bridge loans can call 521-HELP or email info at commerceri.com to learn more about those bridge loans. And the city of Providence has a similar program as well. I think Senator Whitehouse, you're about to say something? Nope, good. Nope. Uh, okay, next question is for from Christina and Lincoln, who is writing in from Providence, from the Providence Warwick Convention and Visitors Bureau. What is being done to help regional tourism offices? Um, I just want to address this quickly and then turn it over to Mark. But uh, you know, our whole delegation recognizes that tourism is a really critical part of Rhode Island's economy. It's the fifth largest sector in our state, more than six billion dollars in economic activity and supporting nearly eighty thousand jobs. And so on the House side, I, I really advocated very strongly to the speaker directly uh, to ensure that tourism was uh, included in this economic development relief package. Uh, currently, 501c6 organizations are eligible for the SBA's Emergency Economic Injury Disaster Grants. They Correct. are excluded, however, from the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, this is something I think we're going to have to go back to in a serious way, particularly for states like Rhode Island, where tourism is such a big big part of our economy. But I don't know, Mark, if there are other ways that we're that the SBA is supporting tourism specifically. No, they, no the sixes are definitely excluded. We know that uh, there, there has been um, a lot of discussion regarding the six, but also Congressman, the seven um, and uh, the C7. Everybody said, well, what is a C7? Um, uh, for example, I got a call yesterday from the Harvard Club in Boston. Um, they are a 501 C7, and yes, they're a private club, but they employ 150 people. So um, the and the, so they run actually like a business, even though they're a not-for-profit and run by a board of directors. So the question is, uh, they can go the lane of the EIDL, but they cannot go the PPP. All right. All right. Let's take one of our questions live, so we'll we'll just bounce back and forth. This I question, have I have six minutes, David. Okay, this question is from Cheryl. I contacted my local bank last Monday and still have not heard anything back from them. I'm being told they're they are overwhelmed. What do you suggest I do here? I'm a small restaurant located in Newport and would like to get my application in as soon as possible. That question is from Jane. I'm sorry, uh, I'm send me send me an email at mark m a r k dot haywood h a y w a r d at s b a dot gov. Uh, let me know who your bank is and I'll get to the right person in the bank. Great. Okay. Uh, we'll try to get to a couple more questions. questions that may be the most important piece of information that we've given out right there. <laughs> Look out, Mark. All right. Um, let's go next to uh, Susan East Providence, who has a question on behalf of EB Thompson, Inc. How long does it yep. take for the disaster loan to be approved and for us to receive money through the SBA? That's a good question. I don't know. Okay. Um, uh, you know, and, and there are millions of applications and they're, they're moving as quickly as they can. Um, we're, we're yeah, also, once people have submitted them to sort of let the, I know that's hard to do. You want to check. I know. I mean, I'm seeing it every day, Congressman. And I go in and every time I send to your staff, Senator Whitehouse, Congressman Langevin and Congress and, uh, Senator Reed every day who's approved, but you know, we'd like it to move a lot faster. But remember, it's not Rhode Island, it's the entire country. So, okay. Uh, next question is from Nancy with Pause Watch in Jamestown. What should a small business like theirs with no paid employees do to get a loan for about $40,000 to cover rent and utilities? What should they expect in the application process? Well, I, the application process is very simple. Um, that's what I talked about the new 
um, application for the EIDL. She probably is more on an EIDL uh, lane than she is on the PPP, but she can do both if she's looking for those. By the way, she was uh, in our Emerging Leaders Program, I believe. Um, so um, yeah, she, she should apply for EIDL and those costs should, will be verified. I mean, I was told last night that the average request on the EIDL side is somewhere about 200,000. Great. Mark, doesn't uh, rent get covered on the on the uh, payroll side also? It, it does get covered on the payroll side as well as existing bills um, up and to forgiven. not, not um, interest, not principal. Yes, and and that on the back end would be forgiven. Um, if a business gets a PPP loan, are we still entitled to the employee retention tax credit? This is Lori in Middletown. The answer to that, I think, to that is no. An eligible employer may not receive the employee retention credit if the eligible employer receives a small business interruption loan under the Paycheck Protection Program that is authorized under the CARES Act. Um, Linda with Northeast Apple Company and Johnson, if a small business has already applied for the economic injury disaster loan, can they also apply for the Paycheck Protection Program and any other programs that may become available? Yes. Okay. They are eligible. They are eligible. Okay. Um, and then, uh, just making sure oh, we have. Let's see, okay, Sarah with the Equidnic Planning Commission in Portsmouth. What programs are available for Rhode Island nonprofits for general operating expenses? I know nonprofits, with the exception of religious institutions, are eligible for the Paycheck Protection Program and economic uh, injury disaster loans. Applicants must either have an effective ruling letter from the IRS granting tax exemption under sections 501 C, D, or E, or be able to provide satisfactory evidence from the state that they're a nonprofit organized or doing business under state law. Anything else, Mark, that they, that might be No, okay. no you, you've hit it. Okay. I have one minute, David. Okay. Uh, you have one minute. We have a couple more questions, which I can answer. Mark, are there any final thoughts you want to share with folks about how they can reach you or questions they might have that I can answer or Senator Whitehouse? I, I think Senator Whitehouse said, it, um, yeah, you, they can send me emails at mark, M-A-R-K dot Haywood, H-A-Y-W-A-R-D at SBA.gov. I had 300 in the queue when I got here at 430 this morning. Um, so um, I'm doing the best I can with that. Uh, and we are trying to answer. If I can't answer it, I'm triaging it out to the staff. I think the most important thing is if you do get the PPP loans, please bring your people back, pay your people on your payroll and keep very good records. Um, we are doing the best we can. Uh, all of the SBA staff, we're all working 14, 16 hour days. Uh, that is the absolute truth. We're here to help and we're doing as much as we can. And every phone in this place is ringing. I see that. Thank you, Mark, for joining us and right, really thanks. for accessibility. Uh, let me just get to a few more questions before we wrap it. Um, this is from Thomas in Newport. When will banks lower credit card rates to adjust for zero rates that the federal government is charging them? Um, and it's a great question. Although the Federal Reserve cut the interest rates by a full percentage point to near zero, credit card interest rates are based on the Federal Reserve's prime rate plus a margin set by the credit card issuers. This means that credit card companies can continue to charge exorbitantly high interest rates, even when slash rates uh, with the Fed. I actually in the House led an effort with 45 other members calling on the major credit card companies to suspend collecting interest or charging fees for non-payment. And I've encouraged them to take any other actions possible to ease the financial burden on customers during the COVID-19 pandemic. It's a really, it's an example of really unjust enrichment in my view and kind of trying to shame these credit card companies to do something uh, to, to respond to exactly the issue you raised, um, I think is critical. Uh, we have a question from Lori in Middletown, which I think we answered. Um, Linda, we answered. So I think we have one more online. Um, what help is there for a small sole proprietor with no employees? Um, as a self-employed person, it's only me, I applied for EIDL and I've heard nothing. Are you saying that I can also submit an application under the PPP? And the answer is yes, you can apply. Uh, and this was the point that Senator Wade has made earlier. You can apply for PPE based on your earnings as a sole proprietor, or you can apply for unemployment uh, compensation. And you just have to make a calculation of which of them is produces a greater return for you. And that's a business judgment for you to make. 
but you're eligible for one of those, not both. But you're also available. Uh, uh, it is also available. The disaster loan is also available so long as it's not for personnel. Um, so you just have yeah, to bear in mind that until I think July, you get what you would ordinarily get through the state unemployment insurance system plus $600 that the federal government is adding. And the combination of what you would ordinarily get under the state unemployment system and the $600 may actually be more than you were earning beforehand. So if you're in that position, it would probably be wise to go the unemployment route. Um, but again, you have to make that judgment yourself looking at your own finances. Um, so just a reminder, this is the first of a series of uh, Facebook town halls that I'm going to be hosting. Uh, hopefully I'll have Senator Whitehouse on some of them with me, depending on his schedule. But it's so that we can make sure that Rhode Islanders know how to access the relief that we fought so hard to, to get uh, included in this package. A reminder uh, that you can reach Mark Hayward at uh, his email that he gave out, which is mark.hayward at SBA. Dot gov, uh, Commerce Rhode Island, uh, to talk about the bridge loans that the state is providing, you can call 521-HELP or email at info at commerceri.com. Uh, there's also a program for Rhode Island, I'm uh, sorry, Providence Small Businesses. The City of Providence is providing, and I encourage you to contact, this, uh, city, go to the city website as well. If you need help uh, from the Department of Business Regulation, it's dbr.ri.gov. The Department of Labor and Training, dlt.state.ri.us. And obviously contact our offices if we can help you navigate through this. The final thing I would say is just be conscious of the fact that the, the volume of applications that are coming into the SBA for the programs that are starting today is enormous. And so um, please be conscious of that as you are emailing Mark and uh, calling to get information. Uh, same thing with our offices. Our staffs are working incredibly hard to get answers to people as quickly as we can. Um, please understand that they're responding to lots of requests and reach out to us. We wanna be sure that Rhode Island is getting every single bit of help that we fought hard to be included in this package. And I'll give final words to the Senator. Let me just reemphasize what uh, David said about our offices. We are all up and operating, albeit remotely. And we may very well be able to help you with your question because we've answered it for somebody else so we know the answer or we may be able to um, get an answer for you. So please don't hesitate to call on your congressman or your senators. We're all in this together and we really appreciate you joining us today. Yeah, and if we didn't get to your question for some reason, please uh, go to our, either of our websites. You can submit your question in writing and we'll make sure we answer them. And I uh, thank you for joining us this morning and thank you, Senator. Thank you, David, well done.